start with a new topic and the topic is about the step well which is also known as the step well aap unko bowdly ke taur pe jante hain and those of you have visited uh, like uh, fort like rotas fort so you must have visited the bowdlys in the rotas fort there are not one but not two many but three bowdlys in the lower fort and one of them is a quite big one but uh, that big one uh, doesn't reflect the true spirit of the bowdlys as the the art of making gold is developed in the subcontinent particularly in the areas which are known as gujarat gujarat that is the ahmedabad is the center and this is gujarat in india as a province not the gujarat city in pakistan so the area that area is mostly known for the development of the bowlies but then gradually as the muslim came it uh, the art of making gold is spread to the rest of their kingdom so that is the topic of our research and we will see what was the causes of the making or the building of these bowlies and uh, how far the art of uh, building went uh, in this field of architecture not only it was an art of building but it is also also the art of cutting not only it was an art of cutting it was an, an art of the absolute geometry and if if you look at some of the bowlies the way the rocks have been cut and they converted into various kind of bowlies the most impressive feature is the organization of the geometry everything is so meticulously made or cut out of the rock so that is the topic of our discussion but as we as we go with our discussion and see some of the slides one thing we must keep in mind that when we talk of the heritage some of the heritage uh, 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 some of our heritage or elements of our heritage we can say they belong to islam they belong to hinduism they belong to buddhism they belong to christianity but certainly there are uh, quite a few elements where we cannot stamp uh, put the stamp of a religion on these monuments they can belong to any religion so when we are looking at the bowlies or the step wells we will see that step well could be could belong to any any religion So it's a kind of secular building or a secular construction. We don't know, don't want to say they are strictly Islamic or they are strictly Hindu, but uh, the differentiation can be made when we look at the features of these bowlies. Nevertheless, I will not say that we can segregate Islamic bowlies from the Hindu bowlies. So this is the topic: the step well or the bowlies. The step well is also known as step wells. It is one and the same thing. now the bowlies um, are the forgotten monument of the subcontinent and i will be giving a lecture on this much has been research and written on the lost legacy of architecture here we have discussed monuments like uh, tombs and, and, and mosques and uh, many other things but bowlies are generally left out so that is the topic may not be may not look very important but when you look at some of these bowlies some of the features of these bowlies then they be, then they begin to look very very important bowli is a large well with a long uh, or a helical flight of steps descending to the lower level so is 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 word here helical what is a helical what is helical uh, double spiral Yeah, we can say double spiral, just just a helix kind of helix a spiral. Sometimes it is double also, okay. it is a spiral. So the evolution or the prototype of these bowlies can be looked into the catacombs of the Europe. So the catacombs, if you remember, in one of our previous uh, lectures, we talked about the catacombs, and they were the burial chambers, in fact, and they were also situated. around the cylinder of the of the well and uh, the flight of steps went down in a circular manner so that is a the helical thing and at various level there used to be streets running out of the well axis and then uh, in the street there used to be very uh, other elements of these catacombs that we we'll, i'll show you some picture of the catacombs also to refresh your mind coming back to the bowlies bowlies were like this there it was uh, there is or there used to be a well this is the well and at the distance there used to be a small house which was known as a dolat khana and a flight of step used to go down to the water level so if the water level came up the 
whatever the steps were done, down into the water level. Then when the water level went down, the steps were made naked and the people could reach the water level. And he said, it is an official residence, official residence. So this is a kind of official residence for which the people or the royal family could descend to the water level. And then it was like this, at each level, there would be a story and uh, that story will have a number of chambers and number of rooms. So depending on uh, the level of the water inside the well, so whatever, wherever the water level, the, the residents could go to that level. Another thing, if you have ever observed, the character of the water in the well, the character of the water in the well is such that uh, during the winters, the, the water level, the water becomes slightly tepid. Tepid means T-E-P-I-D, slightly warmer. In, in summer, the water becomes absolutely cool, or cold, let's say cold. So that is an advantage of the well, of the water in the well. So because of this, uh, what we should say, very it's a considerable, a very appropriate temperature of the water in winters as well as in summer, it was, uh, uh, it was always favorable to the residents to go closer to the water. In summer, they could go closer to the water to have more coolness, come over here to have lesser coolness and much lesser coolness over here. And then in the winter, it was opposite to this. They went to the closer to the water first to seek some heat. And as they come up, they were having fresh air from outside and which were much cooler. So that was the function of various levels of uh, bowling. The structural elements of these bowlies included a vertical well. Obviously, the wells are always vertical. Long stepped corridor leading down to the surface of water and intermediate chambers in the step corridor and around the shaft of the well. Now, these are the main circular feature of these bowlies. And this is a bowlie in the Purana Kila uh, in Delhi. When we say Purana Kila, there, there are many, actually, if you look at the history of Delhi, there are at least seven or eight dailies which were built from time to time by various rulers. So one ruler called it a Purana Kila and the other ruler called it uh, Shah Jahanabad and third, third ruler called it Tughlaqwa, Tughlaqabad and at uh, some time it was known as Siri. So there are many names of Delhi and we can read study the history of Delhi in that sequence. So that's very interesting. So Purana Kila is one of the developments of Delhi during the Tughlaq kings and this is a passage going to the level of the water still passage, not publication at all. And sometimes the body, the steps descended from this pavilion down to the level of the water in this in this well. And this is the mouth of the well, which has been protected and slightly decorated also. And this is how we see a well from the top. There are openings inside the well at various levels. You can see quite dangerous. No barricade here to stop the visitors. But this was how the construction was done. And we have behind this. We see a uh, lot of construction, maybe rooms or chambers or verandas for the people to sit and relax. And that is it, another bowli in Ahmedabad. And you can see the decorative elements also. Now, the, if you look at this bowli, uh, two questions come to our mind. Was it a, a bowli which was constructed? Or is it a bowli which was cut out of the rock? Or it was a bowli which was uh, half cut and half built? And the third answer is correct. It was half cut and half built. But then again, when they were cutting and building, look at the exact geometry or the exact proportion which they were maintaining at every level. This is the Shahi Bawli in Lucknow. It's associated or attached to the great Imambara of Lucknow. And if you have ever studied the history of the city of Lucknow, the city of Lucknow is best known but it's various Ambarga. So this is the Bauli over there. And once again, you can see the beautiful construction of various type of uh, arches in this. And now we have the barricades here so that the visitors do not fall in, but there's no barricade at this level. But the condition of the Baulis have become very wretched. I mean, they're dirty, the water is not clean in most cases, and the people throw all kinds of litter into these places, which is a very common habit of the people of India and Pakistan and Bangladesh. 
Yet another bowling from inside, and uh, you can see the construction here. The stone is not used, stone is not cut, but everything is built of uh, bricks. And these elements, these elements reflect the kind of the Mughal arches, which are multiple arches. But these elements, which are compressed inverted uh, domes, is the element of the six. That means even the six influence was coming into the construction of these bowlies. Then the bowlies are remembered by various names from in various parts of India and Pakistan. For example, in Hindi and Urdu, they are known as bowli or a bowdi. In Sanskrit, it is known as Vapi or Vapika. And uh, in Gujarati language, the language of the Ahmedabad, etc., it is Vau or Vaudi. So the difference between uh, Bauli and Bauri is the big one is Bauli and small one is Bauri. The big one, big one is Vapi and small one is Vapika. And the big one is Vau and small one is Vadika. It's like this big and small, big and small, big and small. Big and small. They are the two categories. So there are many words in Sanskrit and with ka, like the Radhika and the Karnataka and etc. Et so let's not go into that detail. Now similar subterranean structure can also be found in ancient Rome and Egypt. So yeah, this, this, this kind of structure is not a, we can see, not only we can see in India or Pakistan, they are in Egypt and in lot of places in Europe as well. The Angon burial places built around the shaft of a well, which is known as the catacomb. This is the catacomb from Kumul Shukafa, which is in uh, Egypt. And once again, we can see the opening here and opening here, that means the steps are going to this level and also to this level and much lower level also. <coughs> but the construction inside is quite uh, unwelcome, not very pleasant. The catacomb in the Luxembourg. Yet another catacomb. And this is what was happening in the catacombs as we discussed in one of our previous lectures. The shelves are picking the, picking the dead bodies on both sides of this lane. And this lane is then offshoot, which is coming from the cylinder of the well. And then ultimately, what is left of these burials in the catacombs. And ultimately, these bones are collected and uh, stains stacked in this manner and get another picture so that's not our topic of study today